So can I ask a question by, by voice or should I? Sure. Uh, voice, yeah, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, Moti, thank you. Very interesting talk. So I have a question regarding the very last slide where you discuss uh, possible topological protection of quantum states. Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, you mentioned those experiments, basically two of them by Andrea and by uh, Mohammed Hafezi group. So yeah. I wonder what is your uh, understanding? Let's imagine we have some uh, system with the dissipation, some decoherence. So I wonder whether this uh, concepts of topology can somehow potentially protect the entanglement against these mechanisms, namely dissipation, decoherence, uh, this stuff. Okay, so here the issue is really the, uh, really the system. If you are talking about entangled photons, yes. it's completely different than entangling of photons with electrons or excellent polaritons and so forth. Why? Because when you have, when the entanglement is together with matter, then the topological protection is similar to the ideas that were proposed in condensed metaphysics. Because you reduce scattering by the topological protection and you can prolong the coherence time. So it's similar, not that it was done, it was not. In other words, even the experiments that were done in the University of Pittsburgh collab that collaborated with me or on the topological insulators, the exon polaritons, or the uh, nice experiments by uh, Jacqueline Bloch or by others, they did not, none of them today, as of today, has shown that the coherence time is prolonged. It's a challenge and it should be done. And I think it's exciting to do it. Now, on the other hand, if you are talking about entanglement of photons, then photons generally, entanglement of photons survives forever. As long as your system, the photonic system, does not fluctuate at the rate of, that is similar to the speed of light or the rate of the optical cycle, okay? And the reason for that is that, but what will happen to it is that your signal to noise ratio goes down. What happens is that if you have a system of two entangled photons, let's say that they go together, really together. Let's say they are polarization entangled and they go together or they go opposite directions, doesn't matter so much. Or they go one after the other, okay? If they scatter, what will happen to them is the probability to find the, the coincidence, the experiment of coincidence of the entanglement to find the entanglement will go on a region that is bigger and bigger and bigger. As a result of that, your signal to noise ratio will go down considerably. This can be corrected by topology. The topology will make sure that you reduce scattering to minimum. You cannot avoid scattering at all completely, but there will be very, very little scattering. And as a result of that, the signal to noise ratio will be higher up. So it's more of a practical issue. It was not shown yet in any experiments, but it's a still standing challenge to do it and to see what, what can we help. So if you think about quantum computing, if the quantum computing will be done by one way optical, uh, uh, one way quantum computing, like, uh, this, like the companies PsyQuantum or Xanadu, then there, in my opinion, we can help quite a bit but they can do okay even without the topological protection. But if you want to go to system to other systems of quantum computing, their topological design that require, let's say, external polaritons or any other systems that are mostly that are, the entanglement is with matter, there it will be a major impact to have topological protection. That's my opinion. Thank, thank you so much, Moti. So I think uh, Maxim Gorlach uh, raised his hand, so he wants to ask a question. I'm just asked. Yeah, yeah, it was my question. Yeah, ah, okay. Th thanks a lot. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Don't be shy. I know that Moti has a bad reputation, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I like answering questions, actually. <laughs> they, they open your mind, especially if comes a question that I didn't think about in advance. I don't know. I I can see. I hear your voices, but I don't see you. Yeah, you have some issues with your bandwidth. It seems. No, right now the issue is a thunderstorm that is going around. So maybe it creates disturbances on the internet. That could be. You know, my my question is: When are you going to do some mechanics? Solid mechanics, Moti. 
uh, fluid dynamics I'm doing now. I actually, I've been doing for 10 years now. But fluid mechanics, I don't think that I will do. Fluid dynamics, yes, I do all the time. Bogdan, would you like to say some closing words? Or maybe Sebastian. Or maybe Sebastian. Uh, definitely. Uh, I will, uh, let's wait, Sebastian. He has to say some more words about the last uh, seminar. But also, I think we, we should have some uh, more questions. Please, uh, guys. We have so many people. Uh, so if there is an opportunity, I would ask another question uh, to Moti sure. regarding this four-dimensional realization. So Moti, yeah. do you have in mind some three-dimensional structure where the fourth dimension is synthetic or how many synthetic dimensions do you anticipate in that system? Okay, so what I have in mind, so right now in the paper that we have now under review, we have two dimensions is X and Y and the third one is synthetic. It's, you can think about it as the modal dimension. What I have in mind is to have two synthetic, but for four dimensions, I want to have two synthetic dimensions and two real space dimensions. Okay, it can be done. If you look in our uh, paper from 2019, the nature paper, you will see that we, in the supplementary, we propose some systems where it can be done. It can be done, for example, if you have uh, in every waveguide like this, you have two modes that immediately will, can generate you for you an additional synthetic dimension. And there are some several, quite a few other tricks. When you go to synthetic dimensions, or when you go to dimensions that are three dimensions and higher, there is one major thing that you need to take into account, okay? And that is the following, that there is a, the, the easy solution is to take a two-dimensional model, topological insulator, two-dimensional models, and to put them one on top of the other and allow some transport. These are called weak topological insulators and they are not very good. They are not mm -hmm. robust. They are yes. very weakly robust. So do you need to find a trick how to make them robust. That's the trick. So can you do strong topological insulators? That's what we did. What we no. did in the 3D, we used dislocations. And dislocations and transform the weak topological insulator into a strong one. The ideas are not mine, they belong to Iran Right, right. So do, do I understand correctly that you have some non-vanishing second churn number in that case? That's correct. Yeah, thank you. Very interesting. Recording in progress. <laughs> Guys, any more questions? Please go ahead. If not, maybe Sebastian would like to say or Muammar or Bogdan some closing uh, words to the mask. Yes. Uh, sorry, I, I need to wear the face mask. So... Uh... I mean, for us, it was a great honor to have uh, Professor uh, Segev uh, with us today. It's a, a, a huge honor, and we are extremely happy to close uh, this uh, year 2021 uh, with such an inspirational uh, talk. Um, and uh, we very, very much encourage people to, uh, well, watch this webinar again and again and again because I'm, I, I'm sure it will become viral this uh, webinar it was just wonderful to to hear what professor segev had to say today and uh, i hope that we will have a better year 20, 2022 and uh, actually uh, hopefully uh, many more webinars to come but also uh, in person you know meetings and uh, well in-person conference in 2022, hopefully. So thank you very much, uh, Gal, for giving me the opportunity to, yeah, I mean, uh, express my deepest, uh, you know, um, celebration to, to, I mean, this one wonderful uh, webinar today. Sorry, it's just the emotion. <laughs> Sorry for that.
Bogdan, would you like to but, say something? But, yeah, social? perhaps Bogdan, you should also say something. Perhaps Bogdan, you should also say something. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks again, Professor Sege, for this uh, very nice uh, and interesting uh, seminar. And uh, uh, let's thank everyone uh, for participating and uh, making these meetings uh, possible because it was a uh, full year uh, with uh, lots of questions, uh, new uh, uh, proposition, which was which was great. Uh, let's hope uh, we uh, can meet again next year, and uh, we can also uh, be able to uh, will be able to to meet in person for real uh, events, scientific events. So uh, thanks all. Okay, then I think we can uh, wrap it up. Uh, Thanks, everyone, and have a great 2022. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.